differences between driving those types of cars and some of the more modern ones? Um, I, I think I can. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I don't, my history goes back a, a certain amount. Um, my knowledge of some of the things that have, have changed from way back then is, is, you know, pretty good. But I, I think it's just overall that, that you know, the cars back then, um, even though they were the top level, whether it be a Formula One car or a, a top performance car, you could take a top street car it's developed so far in advance that it would actually go beat one of the top level for sports cars back then. Um, with that said though, it doesn't matter what, as a professional racing driver, you are always driving the car to the limit. And if anything, the cars back then, it was more dangerous time. Um, cars were not as precise in the way that you were able to manipulate what you wanted them to do. So I would say in some ways it's safer today the cars drive easier um, and yet they're going faster. So I have a lot of respect for especially the drivers back then um, and driving what they had to drive. Then they were, one thing they knew how to do back then is horsepower. They knew how to make you know cars go really fast in a straight line, which was scary because they didn't really bra brake too well or turn too well. Um, and they were extremely unsafe if you crashed them. So. Um, and, and I might be touching on one little more thing is that, you know, they did it with two drivers at Le Mans lack, lack back then, which the, the, is quite amazing to me because when I raced Le Mans, it was three drivers, it's three drivers, that's what it is now. And that was fatiguing enough with three guys, you know, so to do it with two guys in cars that were really tough between, you know, the exhaust that stuff that must have come inside the cars the seating was not comfortable I mean we, we have seats that are basically molded to our bodies right now the most comfortable seats you'd ever want to sit in and they're safe so yeah I it, unbelievable you know the differences yeah I'm at the track a lot of my my son uh, Spencer Bucknam is a third generation driver so his goal is to um, race Le Mans, um, race the Indy 500. Um, so I do a lot of work with him. I still do a little coaching with other people. Um, I do, in, in, and I enjoy driving race cars on racetracks. I don't have any desire to race cars anymore. Um, you know, had my good fill of 20, 25 years of, of racing. Um, so once I retired from racing, that, that part is, and I've never looked back on that, but I, I, tr I do truly love driving cars on racetracks. So that is that the art of it and, and the fun um, aspect of the uh, flow that it takes to be driving, driving a car properly on a racing track is super fun to me. Yeah. How old is your son, Spencer? He's 20. Yeah, so he's, he's starting in the formula ranks. He's in F, what's F4 this year um, in America. He'll be moving on next year. <clears throat> Already have to look ahead and start our budget for next year just because the way racing is. So he'll be in F3 next year. If all goes well, he'll go to Indy Lights and then Indy Cars after that. Yeah, so that's the path he's looking for. Perfect. Yeah. When, when he shared that interest with the rest of your family, was that an exciting thing? You're like, mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, it was. And he's the one that, I have three kids, he's the oldest. And he's the, the only one that showed the racing bug at all. And he's, you know, he's always had it. Um, I have another son who's 15 and he has no desire to, to race cars at all. So, which is fine for me. You know, I will, I will always support my kids what they, what they do. Um, so, but yeah, just by chance. Um, and I, and I'm my, I have a brother and he didn't really have a desire to race. So I was uh, from my father, the only son that wanted to really pursue racing. So it was, it was something that my dad supported. Even though he he'd passed away at the very beginning of my career, when I did start, he was very supportive of that. Yeah. You mentioned you kind of had the bug all over the place about driving during particular types of stuff that you really wanted to drive. Yeah, I think the I mean the movie was great, um, but it did block off about four to five months of my entire life. And I ha I have kids, and I have a fiance, and we have other things that we do, so. Um, I mean, I would, I would do another movie, but I think commercial, um, especially talking, I've done a couple commercials and then talking to some other stunt guys. I mean, it could be a day, it might be a week, um, but that's a little more attractive to me because I, now I'm in my sort of retirement 
years, uh, I like to have my little windows of opportunity to do certain things and then and then be free. But yeah, no, I wouldn't, especially a movie like this, I, I'd sure I'd block out another five months, you know, to be a part of uh, racing history. Those are special. Related to that a little detour, um, your work day, uh, your work product kind of like when you're racing compared to when you're done driving, you know, you might build up the race for a couple of months, but you're not working on one race next week. Right. Like, how, talk about personally how you handled that work day being being different in your work position and how much time is really kind of set between your time versus yeah. when you're driving, how that kind of affects your work. Any thoughts you had on that? Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, the good news on it is that you know, you had a uh, every day a call sheet, even though it would come in probably at one in the morning, and then they wanted you there at five in the morning. Um, you know, it would come in a, <laughs> sometime before, but we had, you know, we had a whole layout, and they took care of you. I mean, they, you know, being uh, once you're at the set, you know, they're feeding you, they're they're bringing you from here to there, they're clothing you, they're putting makeup on you. They're sort of like the PR people taking around all your different. Areas. Right here, like today, with our, you know, <laughs> yeah, car service showing up and taking us in places, which is quite nice. Um, and there was a whole bunch of hurry up, hurry up, and then sit for like three hours and do nothing, um, waiting to go as they got cameras and things. That's was very different than racing. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Um, because there's a flow to racing. We knew you're practicing, you know, at this time and it happens. Like the only time it didn't is something catastrophic happened, but literally, you know, you're when racing, it goes to a schedule and you, like today we start, you know, starting a race. Um, but the movie set was, a, a constant, constant, just moving target. Um, and I mean, there was days I we were I was dressed and ready to go from 12 in the morning, or sorry, say six in the morning, and didn't didn't drive the whole day. <laughs> so you're, you're okay, but there were days we did 18 hour days, and I I literally there was one day at Road Atlanta when we were doing the uh, there was the scene where the car got shot out of a cannon and crashed and did the whole thing um that that day i think i got out of out of 18 hours i think i was not sitting in a car for maybe an hour i was sitting in because we were getting in different cars and we would sit they'd bring us food we were eating inside the car drinking and oh yeah i'd get, go to the restroom but uh other than that i mean it was the longest day ever so we'd have we'd have feast or famine on that well, as a fact uh you're in these cars like racing is it's predictable because you're tires get up to temperature yeah. here when you're filming they may tell you to sit there for four hours your tires are right. bone cold again yeah and then they want you to do the same thing yeah how, how do you handle something like that where it's much less predictable yeah i think that falls back into racing though because yeah you you, you have that but you know when you could have a, a full course yellow come out and it's yeah. it, you go slow down and it could be a two lap yellow or it could be you know a, a 15 lap yellow um there could be you know dirt that was on the track your tires get so you end up dealing with that those conditions or it starts sprinkling out right for a half hour and it changes all track conditions for a little bit so i think those those things come right back to you um uh so so i guess i guess the good news is um that's where having racing drivers do some of this stuff is is quite good because our whole goal is to extract out of a car the most you can at that moment in time you know perfect conditions you're going to get more out of it right damp morning fog you're going to get less performance than out of the car or you're still going to get 100 percent out of the car but its performance is diminished so it, it, felt, it actually felt natural to to do it did you run into any situations because you say that and it makes sense yeah but to a director they're like no i want you to do that yeah and yeah was there any time where that never really met oh yeah like, that's not going to happen well, thank God we had our stunt coordinator who knew and had some racing background because uh, James Mangold, the director, and again, he doesn't know about racing, but he wanted certain things. Up in the real race, it rained the whole night at Le Mans in 1966. So every night scene we did, they had sprinklers going. Whatever we were doing, it was wet. And they're like, you, you need to go faster. Well, literally, these were scary times where we were literally hydroplaning and trying to n miss big camera structures and people standing. I mean, I, it was, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty, <laughs> your heart was way up and there were some moments, you know, behind the scenes, some of us drivers were like, I cannot believe I straightened that car out because it was sideways and then straight again. So yeah, and they wanted it to go even faster, but like, it's not possible. Yeah. Speed up the film. 
Yeah, he didn't have to. Growing up, when our parents tell us stories, whatever, we don't always hear the whole thing, correct? What were you aware of in this story in your father's history from before you started the project? And then what did you learn from this project that you had no idea about? <coughs> yeah. So I have a, you know, my background's pretty interesting, um, different than, and I'm sure you guys know Alex Gurney and Dan Gurney. Um, he grew right up, Alex grew up right up in with his dad, and his dad stayed in racing and owned teams. My dad's last race was in, I think, 1972. And um, so when, and then he, he and my mom moved us um, from Southern California up to uh, Central California where I ended up just surfing most of the time. So what I'm getting to is my dad was retired and did, wasn't around the racing industry. So I grew up in not really a racing industry. We didn't talk a whole bunch. So most, I'll tell you, once I started, decided to go racing and then my racing career, because my dad had passed away when once I really started my racing career, I learned so much about my dad's career uh, from guys like Dan Gurney, Carol Shelby, you know, um, AJ Foyt, you know, Bob Bondurant. These guys told me stories I had never known, even from my dad. So it was it was a great. I learned a lot about the the race just from some of the things that were told to me during the race. Um, I probably had, because you know my racing career lasted a long time, so I, I, I had learned a lot during my career about the about the history of it, which again was quite amazing because growing up, you know, I did not know my dad as a race car driver. I mean, I knew he raced cars, but to the, the things that he, you know, did, the history between even being the first Formula One driver for Honda and then being, you know, a part of the one, two, three finish at Le Mans, you know, he actually helped win the Trans Am Championship for Roger Penske, the Sunoco Camaro with Mark Donahue. My dad drove the teammate car, the number nine car. It was a manufacturer's championship and he won the last race to win the championship for Roger Penske in the Sunoco Camaro. So a lot of history there, yeah. Yourself has been 24 hour a week here since I moved yeah. to Le Mans. Um, can, can you compare what it was like in your, in your dad's era of racing versus what it is when you were racing and what it is now? Yeah. What yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> again, safety, way, way safer now. You know, I, like I told you, I have my son getting into racing now and uh, it doesn't it doesn't worry me i worry more about him driving on the streets out on the road than um, i actually worry about him racing cars um even though i said my dad drove Le Mans with just two guys um i think the crazy part then is they weren't they weren't guys going to the gym back then they weren't you know eating healthy um they were pretty much smoking drinking and you know <laughs> hanging out with girls you know so um that was the amazing part back then what Today, these guys out here racing right now, physically, I, unless someone has sat in a race car and driven a race car at speed around, you know, banking and cornering and under braking, the G's you pull under braking, it is so fatiguing. And then you're all suited up. The, you, the dehydration that you get in the car is unbelievable. You will lose, you know, so much weight just in your water from if you don't keep hydrating in the car. So. Um, that difference, the, the physical aspect is more now, for sure. We pull way more G's in the race car than they did back then. Um, what they had, what was scary about them is they were, weren't sure if their friend was gonna make it to the end of the race without losing their life. That was a much scarier time. What were the tracks themselves? Yeah, I mean, again, way safer now too, yeah, because I mean, a lot of times things that lined an apex were these tires like sticking out of the ground, halfway out of the ground. And if you hit that, you were flipping into a tree, right? Um, you know, now we, 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 we have so many things that are so much safer. Uh, you know, I, I'm a big Formula One fan as I am with a lot of sports cars and different things, but I, I the European circuits all, all their, everything off the track is paved instead of sand traps, which is so much safer. I wish most tracks would make that happen. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's always had a lot of resistance, um, you know, with the cars, even the Indy cars going to some of the things to make it safer for your head and your helmet and stuff. But ultimately, um, it, people seem to finally get used to it and it is safer. And so it's, uh, I feel fortunate that, because I, out of my 20 years, I never broke a bone. I never got knocked out. 
and I only got bumps and bruises, and I was in a lot of crashes. <laughs> Even on O, I crashed out of both Indy 500s and hit the wall. Um, just I got hit and got crashed and hit the wall, and, and it'll knock the wind out of you and almost knock you out, but you don't break your bones. So it, you get bruised up, you know, but it's, it's a very safe time to race. Uh, yeah, I think the most beautiful car I ever raced uh, was a LMP car like this that is racing at the 24 Hours of Daytona here. Um, I won Sebring in 2005. Um, it was called a Courage, um, made by Yves Courage. He's a French uh, fellow and uh, who, in France, in, in Le Mans, actually. So um, it was a, just, just, a, just a beautiful looking car just the the lines it had and the open cockpit which is different now now it's a coupe um, so beautiful beautiful car indie cars were probably the, the the best cars I drove as far as their ability and performance and top speeds and braking and cornering um, but the the LMP car the prototype car was very close it actually generated more downforce just because the whole car a, a basically acts as a wing and then there's so much tunnels that are created under it, it sucks it to the ground um, but the indie cars had more horsepower and they were a little bit lighter, so it was more nimble. So do you prefer indie dirt driving over like a, a endurance race like this? Or what's the I would say they're even, um, I mean, I except for if I had to pick one race to win, I'd want to win the Indy 500 in all honesty, or Le Mans. I, I, I actually, that's pretty <laughs> tricky. Um, I, I'm thinking, at first I was thinking of America. So in America, Indy 500, I will say Is that. that. Just it's just, it's, I've raced the Indy 500, I've raced the 24 hours of Daytona, I've raced the 24 hours of Le Mans. The two places that are the, the, the experience at the Indy 500 is nothing like anything, just even driving. And then at Le Mans, it's, it, you know, even going through scrutineering um, the few, the week before with, you know, right down in, uh, in Le Mans, you're down in town and, and all the people that come out and, come see it in the parade that they do it's it's something else and they do a parade at the Indy 500 so yeah the two are, are pretty amazing but um, yeah so Indy cars uh, you're you're you know they, they are because you're at the highest speeds so often like at the Indy 500 you're at 230 miles an hour almost at all times you know racing and then um, their performance at places like Road America and all these different tracks they're, they're just so fast under you know braking cornering and all those different things so yeah, and that's a long answer there, but I mean, I, ha I mean, I'm still thinking. That I did love my prototype car, the the Courage car that we drove. It was beautiful. Yeah, Courage, right? <laughs> it's felt the same. Yeah. Um, I think I'd rather have the racing um, as far as that because your adrenaline is up so high. Um, uh, it was like it's being stuck on an airplane, you know, in the movie thing. Because we, uh, even though I was in the car, you, we were mostly just, uh, yeah, you were sitting and, and you were waiting until you, know, you got a call from Robert Nagel to say, okay, you, you know, action, action, action. But you might sit for an hour and do nothing while they were doing something else. You know, so um, yeah, I, 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 when I got out of the car, I mean, I was, like, I've never been that stiff in my life because, you know, you were, your adrenaline wasn't even keeping blood flowing and things like that. So yeah, it was, uh, it's a great thing to look back at and I, I will always remember it and love it. You know, that one day too, we got so much done. Um, yeah, but in the moment, you're just like, oh, that like your yes, exactly. Yeah. So it was, uh, like I said, in the moment, y you were, especially towards the end of the day you couldn't wait till the day was over but now I look back at it and I think what a great moment that was in that whole filming just because of all, all the stuff we got done and and uh, you know making it happen was, was really cool being part of that process about being on set for long hours and yeah. months at a time when you first see the final product is it, is it, does it all make sense or was like were you even surprised by it? yeah I think that's why I'm looking forward to this release of the digital um, uh, 
part of it coming up is I get to pause it and and because I was actually caught up so much in the movie how well the script was written and the storyline and I, and and again I learned some things about even Ken Miles. My dad and him were actually good friends, but they were friends. It wasn't like my friend. So, um, but I just I knew they were close friends. And when he passed away, a little bit later after the Lamal race at Riverside, it, it was devastating for my father. But but to answer your question. Um, uh, I was caught up so much in the actual story. I loved it. I loved the acting. I loved the stuff that was going on, and, and I almost missed some of the stuff that I did in the movie, as far as driving. Yeah, it goes quick, and they and there's clips and there's flashes and there's this and that. So I'm of course going to go back when I buy the digital part, and I'm going to pause it, and I'm going to see my one second of fame, you know, with my eyes looking out the windshield. Is there uh, any like extended cut or any stuff? That's not that I know of. Yeah. I mean, if there is one, I'll buy it for sure. Um, but I, I, I don't know about if there is one for sure. Yeah. What was your favorite sequence in the movie? Um, funny thing is, it was the stuff we did at Willow Springs um, in the, it was the SCCA race that they did before it was part of the Lamas stuff. Because we literally, they brought us out uh, old Corvettes and old, uh, or speed, uh, speedsters, right? And all these other whatever, um, Cobras and things. And we literally, that was the one time we literally drove on a racing track at the speed these little cars could go. And we were hustling and sliding and we had camera cars. I mean, that was literally the fun, funnest thing. We did some other cool stuff, but all of us were just hooting and laughing and you know, pulling up alongside. We even had the one Thing that went wrong is we had one guy actually hit the back of somebody else went off in the dirt and they ended up using it in the film it was not planned at all I saw it happen right next to me he came up and I'm like oh no <laughs> she went off it's not so part of it it's just the nature of that scene it doesn't yeah. have to be uh, accurate and, and well planned out so you guys could still have no I I mean just to be honest what happened was is we had pra practiced it a whole day we didn't get the shot in before the sun went down so when we did it the next day, they brought in a new guy for that car, and the, the cars were supposed to break hard, and he, he didn't know it. He didn't know that was coming, because he filled in for the guy that did all the practicing the day before. So I was actually supposed to be in the spot where the guy hits the brakes, and I'm supposed to stop, but I got shuffled out over to the side. So this guy pulls up, the other stunt guy, and he had no idea. This guy hits the brakes, and he just went bam right into the back of him. Like, oh my gosh, that was terrible. But instead of the part you said you had fun, yeah, just that was there. yeah. Because there was less structure to that. It was yep. like, hey guys, just go. They did. They said just make it happen. Just yeah. go. Yeah, just go everywhere. Because they had camera, a camera car out there with us, and they just took the best footage. And so it wasn't as critical. As yep. Getting, like, they were the just saying, let's just go race, you know, and right. we'll just use whatever's the best footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was fun. Super fun. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.